In this clip, I'm going to show how to calculate probabilities in Excel. We start with binomial random variable with n equals 5 and pi equals 0.3. We know the possible outcomes of this variable are 0 to 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to calculate the probability mass function labeled as little p of x and the cumulative density function called big P of x. So we go to this little function calculator and in the categories we'll find statistical and then we'll find binome.dist and we have this. There are a number of inputs. Number s, that is the outcome we're looking for. For instance, zero successes. Then trials is the number of n and probability is pi and then we have to choose a cumulative or a probability mass function false for probability mass. And we get this particular value. If we double click on this field, we see the references. Now, if we copy that, we want to make sure that the n and the pi refer to the same cell, so we put dollar cells in there. And we can just copy down to get the entire probability mass function. Now, if we want the cumulative distribution function, do that two ways. Either we, for, we know for zero it's the same as the probability mass function of zero. For one it's the same as the probability mass of zero and one. So we can use this little formula here to calculate the cumulative density function. But we could also use this binome.dist function because we know the last input where we chose false if we chose true, we get the cumulative density function. So I just change that to true and copy it all down, and we replicate exactly the same result for the cumulative distribution function. So let's continue with the Poisson random variable. Here we only have one parameter, lambda is equal to 5. And uh, then what about the outcomes? Let's say we have outcomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we will extend that later, you'll see why. Again, we want the probability mass function and the cumulative density function labeled little p of x and big p of x. Go in the field where we want to calculate the probability and click on the fx function. Again, we look for statistical and now we have to look for Poisson. We'll just have to scroll down until we find it. There's Poisson. So now, the x, that is again the outcome we are looking for, the probability for. So let's say in zero successes, the mean, that is our parameter, that is the lambda. And again, we have the choice between probability mass function and cumulative, we choose false. And again, I shall fix by using dollar signs the coefficient, and then I can just copy down and I get the different probabilities for the uh, different possible outcomes, 0 to 5. And I also calculate the cumulative distribution function. I use the formula here straight. Again, I just uh, change the last parameter to true and copy everything down. And you can see here the cumulative distribution function has only gone to 60, so I'll extend the number of outcomes to 6, 7, 8, 9. And you can see the cumulative distribution functions, which we know should go all the way up to 1, gets closer and closer to 1, but will possibly have to go all the way to possible successes of 14, 15, where we are now already pretty close to 1. Let's add a few more, 16, 17. So Poisson random variable doesn't have a restricted number of outcomes, could be any sort of outcome discrete outcome. Now let's look at the probability mass functions, the probability for certain outcomes. You can see the most likely outcomes are here in the year area from three to seven successes. Okay, and that is of course around, or that turns out to be the values around our coefficient, our parameter lambda equals to five. 